Welcome back, everyone. As a society, our focus has been on how to fight the coronavirus and prevent people from becoming critically ill from it. But the virus is putting people's lives in jeopardy in ways that directly have really nothing to do with COVID-19. Dr. Michael Moore, a neurosurgeon with Sierra Neurosurgery Group, joins us now via Skype. Hi, Dr. Moore. Thanks so much for joining us. The Hello, thank you for having me. The diagnosis of brain tumors um, have gone down, but you believe that isn't necessarily as good as it sounds maybe to us. No, and uh, it's great that we uh, are not seeing quite as many tumors uh, in the emergency room, but we know in the general, with the general principles of oncology that there's a certain incident. And uh, what we see is that the numbers in the emergency room are tending to decrease However, if the general population is a certain number that should be popping up from time to time, uh, the fact that we're seeing less in the emergency room means that probably more of these individuals are staying home for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And that could be that they're just not being seen by neighbors and subtle changes in them are not being seen that would prompt them to go to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that they're just afraid of uh, going to the emergency room because of the current pandemic. And what message would you give to established brain cancer patients? Um, what treatments are still available and safe in this environment that we are in right now? What I would tell patients that currently have a diagnosis of cancer and were under treatment by an oncologist, a radiation oncologist, or a surgical oncologist is that you're safe to continue with your therapies. And we have many methods of treating them as an outpatient both with medical therapies as well as doing an outpatient uh, treatment for radiation therapies. Unfortunately, there is not a significant amount of outpatient surgical therapies that we can provide them, but delay in surgical interventions, delay in radiation therapies or medical therapies may uh, eliminate certain possibilities for treatments for patients and can uh, tend to give them a worse prognosis because of delay in therapy may make a patient that's curative non-curative and a patient that could be a chronic condition that's being treated well to the point where the patient may be more of a hospice type of patient in the future. And our fear is that these patients that are not presenting, that are staying home and having delayed diagnosis may be getting worse prognoses as an outcome because they just delayed their therapy. And that, that's our biggest fear right now in seeing lower numbers. And you've seen kind of a similar pattern with, with uh, neurovascular issues or stroke patients. Again, the numbers in the ER are dwindling. Um, again, is that the same reasons? Um, and when we have this chance, let's remind people of the symptoms that need to be evaluated right away uh, that really can't wait until the morning or a virtual visit. Yes, uh, I, I talk to many of my colleagues that do interventional neuroradiology, as well as we have one member of our group that does uh, thrombectomies, and they have told me, along with the critical care faculty at the, the, the multiple hospitals here, that they are seeing lower numbers of stroke patients. And we know that stroke is a end result of many years of uh, vascular disease, so the numbers, just because of a pandemic, should not be going down. Unfortunately, uh, with stress, sometimes these things go up, and w delay in stroke therapy is is uh, is is a critical error. Um, these patients that mm. could have a thrombectomy or potentially a, um, a TPA, which is a medical uh, drug delivered to them, could have a reversible stroke. And if you delay this minutes, hours, or days, this will become an irreversible injury. Um, and we want to make sure that patients who have a decline in their neural function, so maybe a subtle motor weakness, speech issues, uh, difficulty walking, any of these things should prompt somebody to go to the emergency room. Um, we also uh, know that there are local ED hotlines for most of the hospitals. Uh, hopefully we can uh, give a, a resource for um, some of the, the nursing hotlines. So if somebody is scared, but really mm. needs to be evaluated that those nursing staff uh, on those lines could helpfully vet those patients and try to encourage them to go to the emergency room for formal evaluation. All right, Dr. Moore, thank you so much for your input. We really appreciate your time. Thank you.